Lesson 13, guys. In lesson 13, we're going to be talking about square roots, calculating perfect squares of square roots, or square roots of perfect squares, and then learning to approximate square roots of non-perfect squares. So we're, we're going to go through some vocabulary, a little bit of vocabulary at the beginning. Shouldn't be anything new. There will be one new concept that I'm going to introduce you to today that I think uh, probably some teachers downstream have maybe taught incorrectly. It's not a bad mistake, but it's a little mistake that we need to clean up. Um, and I have to clean this up every year regardless of who whatever teacher is. So it's just kind of somewhere along the way you've had a teacher that taught you this incorrectly, probably multiple teachers, but we'll fix it today. Okay. Um, so a perfect square by definition is a number that is the square of an integer. Okay, a perfect square by definition is a number that the squ is a square of an integer. That's a number line number. You probably know this. I do want you to be, and you should be familiar with the perfect squares through 20. Okay, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 81 is 9 squared, and 100 is 10 squared. 11 is 121, 144, 13 is 169, 16 squared is 196, 15 squared is 225, 16 squared is 256, 17 squared is 289, okay, and uh, 18 I get a little sideways on, it's something that ends in a 4, it's, what's 18 times 18, that's 100 plus 80 plus 80, that's 260, 260 plus, let's see. 18 squared. My mind's not working very well. All right. Okay. So it's 100 plus 80 plus 80 plus 64. 324. Okay. And 19 squared uh, would be 100 plus 90 plus 90 plus 81. So 100 plus 90, 90, 360, no, 361, 361, and then 20 squared is 400. Now, as you can see, these two weren't nearly as familiar to me because I haven't, I just, you don't see those a lot, but the others do. So you need to be familiar with the perfect squares up through 400. And here's what I mean by familiar. When you see the number 225, you need to think that's 15 squared. Is it always going to be useful to you to think it, of it that way? Not always, but sometimes it will. What's something else that you notice about these numbers? There's all, it's always 1, 4, 9, 6, 5, 6, 9, 4, 1, 0, right? Is it possible that another number could pop up out there on the end? Because if I went to 21 squared, that's going to be 1 times 1. That's going to end in a, a 1, right? And 22 squared is going to end in a 2 times 2, which is 4. So there's a fact there that we'll get in just a second, all right? But you need to be familiar with the perfect squares through 20. You need to be familiar with those numbers. Um, it might even be something that I would do a timed quiz on at some point, just to make sure that you know it. The perfect squares through through 20. Well, you can, you can come up with them on your own. Yeah, sure. A square root is indicated by a radical symbol. Okay? The radical symbol is this. We're not talking about a swastika. That's a pretty radical symbol, too. But, um, that's the radical symbol. All right? That tells us to take the square root. Now, we can change the index on the radical. Now it tells us to do what? Take the cube root, right? So y'all listen. Y'all listen. The root has, a root expression has three parts. It has the radical, that's the symbol here. That's called the radical. 
This is called the index, and that index tells us which root to take. Square root, cube root, fourth root, fifth root. We can take you know any root we want to take. And then what is the inside of a radical expression or a root expression called? Does anybody know? It is called the radicand. Okay, so what's inside is called the radicand. All right, so there's three parts to a root expression. There's the radical, that's the symbol itself. The index tells you which root to take. And the radicand is the part that's on the inside of the radical. Okay, so that's the three parts of our square root expression. All right, uh, and that's, this is what tells us. The radicand is the number or expression under a radical symbol. So in this first expression here, uh, this is the square root of 50. That is equal, the 50 is the radicand, and the uh, index there would be 2. This is, how would you read this expression? 2 times the square root of 7. That's exactly right. It's 2 times the square root of 7. Or you could read it as 2 square roots of 7. I do not want you to get into a habit of saying 2 radical 7. Okay, because radical is not descriptive enough. If you're going to read that as 2 radical 7, how are you going to read this? 2, 3 radical 7. Yeah, see, it gets kind of awkward, right? Yeah. So we want to tell which root it is. That's 2 square roots of 7, and the second one is 2 cube roots of 7. Because you're going to be working with a lot of different roots when you get into calculus and the higher maths. You need to kind of, that's a, and that's a, that's a nitpicky kind of thing, but... It just kind of bothers me. 2 radical 7, let's call it what it is. It's the square root of 7. The radical is just a symbol that doesn't really mean anything on its own. It has to have an index, and we need to know what the index is. Okay, the square root of x written as that square root of x is the number whose square is x. All right, and then it gives you just a nice little example. Because... 4 squared equals 16, the square root of 16 is equal to 4. Right? Right. But negative 4 squared is also equal to 16, and that means that the square root of 16 is equal to 4. Okay, the square root of 16, the square root of 16 the square root of 16 is just 4. Really? Really. really. Last year. I know. I don't want to hear it. Noise. Okay. It, and it's not, it's not just last year. I, we've had to correct this with teachers upstream from here, too. The square root of 16 is just 4. Okay. Now, now uh, let, uh, let me let me let me get this let me get this cleared up for you. Sixteen has two square roots. Okay. What are the two square roots of sixteen? Negative four, 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 negative four. So if I ask you what are the two square roots of sixteen, I would want you to tell me the two square roots of sixteen are four, negative four. You could write it as plus or minus four. But this symbol, y'all listen to me. This symbol is only asking for the principal square root of 16, which by definition must be positive. Square root of 16 is just 4. In mathematics, if we want the negative square root of the number, we ask for it like this. What's the negative square root of 16? Negative 4. It's negative 4. We could ask for them both at once. Plus or minus the square root of 16 means we're interested in both of them. Okay. And that's plus or minus 4. But I can see why you put the other side outside of the um, oh. radical of the 16 because like, you can be 4 and then times by negative 1, which would be 4. Yeah, it's the same thing. But that's not really, this is asking for the negative square root of 16. Really? Yeah. Negative 16 was under the radical. Now that, that gets into a different world, right? Correct. Right, because it would be 1 positive 1 negative. Nope. It's no, it's not real. Remember, remember that a perfect square is the square of an integer. Can you square an integer and get a negative number? No. Any any integer times itself, negative times negative would be positive. Positive times positive would be 
positive. So there's no way, this is an imaginary number, this is 4i. Okay, that's an imaginary number. Well, the i, i is the imaginary unit. i is defined to be the square root of negative 1. So the square root of negative 16 is the square root of negative 16 times negative 1. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of negative 1 is defined to be i. It's the imaginary unit. Okay, now, uh, no, you won't learn that until Algebra 2. We'll, we'll mention it from time to time, but... It's, it's just, that's, those are imaginary numbers, comple the complex numbers. We talked at the beginning of the year about imaginary numbers and real numbers. Imaginary numbers are the square roots of negative numbers. Okay? Okay? Uh, complex numbers are fascinating. It's really, really, when you get to learn it, um, it's, it's really fascinating. And you probably won't learn it until you get into college, unfortunately. Because calculus is calculus of a real variable. You'll learn some complex number uh, theory in Algebra 2, but not very much. Um, and we learned it in college algebra, but you guys are on a calculus track, not a college algebra track, so you'll miss it. Um, I think Miss Clayton teaches Algebra 2. Maybe Miss Fox teaches some too. Honors? I don't know. All right, so here's something that we learned earlier a square number a number that is a square, can only end with digits 0, 1, 4, 5, 6, 9. Ooh, nice. We saw that, right? Mm -hmm. In the pattern, we wrote those numbers down. I said, do you all notice anything about this? They can only end in those numbers. Now, that does not tell us that all numbers ending in those digits will be perfect squares. It's absolutely not true. Okay, We could have numbers that end in 9 that aren't perfect squares. Here you go, 19. That's not a perfect square. No. But we know that 1,932 is not a perfect square. It's not possibly a perfect square because it doesn't end in 0, 1, 4, 6, or 9. Okay? It's just a neat little fact that you can use to rule out numbers as being perfect squares. Okay? You with me, Elijah? All right. Let's look at some examples. These are just some sample type questions. Is the radicand in that expression a perfect square? No. Why not? Because it doesn't end in that. It does. It does. It's zero. Oh, because nothing is 50. I mean, like. Because no integer times no integer times itself is 50, right? I can, 50 isn't. I could tell you something that if you multiply it times itself, it gives you 50. Okay. But it'd be like see it? Like now it wouldn't even have to be a decimal. Oh, 50 over 1 times 1 over 50. Um, That's one. 5, here, here's something. Like, y'all ready? 5 <laughs> times the square root of 2 times 5 oh. square roots of 2. That's oh, yeah. 25 times the square root of 4, which is equal to 50. Oh, but these aren't integers. Perfect squares are defined to be this. So you can't say no because nothing times itself equals 50. You have to say no because no integer times itself is equal to 50. All right? Is that clear? All right. What about this one? Right, because perfect squares are defined to be integers. Yeah, because 8 times 8 is 64. It is. What else times itself is 64? Negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 8 is 64. So 64 has two integers that you can multiply times itself to get 64. How many square roots does 64 have? Two. Two square roots. What are they? Negative eight. A negative 8 and positive 8, but the square root of 64 is just 8. eight. If I want the negative square root, I have to ask for it. This symbol does not spit out two numbers. It only spits out one number because we want it to be a function, right? We want the square root of x to be a function. And remember, functions can't spit out two different y values with the same x value. It can only spit out one. And so we, we, we restrict it, this, to mean just the positive square root of the number. Okay? All right. Estimate the value of the square root of 50. It's about 7, right? You could just say it's, it's really close to 7. To say it's between 7 and 8 
It's not really though, right? I mean, it's it's, close it's really close to seven. That's the best approximation. Um, estimate it seven point one or seven point zero one or zero eight. I don't know what it would be, but it's 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 close to seven. All right. Um, what about this one? Y'all are tired. Y'all are brain dead today. It's equal. Is it not equal? It is. Mm -hmm. It's equal. Oh. It's equal. Yeah, because the left side is 2 plus 6, which is 8, and the right side is 3 plus 5, which is 8, and those are equal to each other. Okay? Now, um, last example. I told you it was a short lesson. The area of a floor that is in the shape of a square. Let's put a square here. Whoa. The area is 289 feet squared. What is the side of the floor? 280. Oh, no. Because it is the square root? 17. 17. Would it be the square root because the area? Uh, no, 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 no. It would be the square root. It's because it's a square. 17. Right? So the side times its side, side squared equals 289, right? So we're looking for the square root of 289, or we're looking for the integer that you multiply times itself to give you 289. It's definitely 17, right? 17 feet for each side. No, because it's asking for side length. Okay? So S would be 17 feet. You'll see a lot of problems like this. The Saxon, the textbook likes it. The test, the test generator likes it. So you need to kind of get used to this concept. The area of a square is the square of a side. So the find the side, you take the square root. Oh. Square roots and squares are what kind of operations? Um, Inverse um, operations, right? Or opposite operations. operations. Okay? Yes? That's a weird way of, like, doing my square roots. Because, like, I always mean 17 because, like, 77 is 49. That's right. So I had to end with a 9. And I know it has between 15 or 18. Or right, so and that's the only one it ends in a 9. Now, but you don't know it's uh, a perfect square just yeah. by saying that. But, yes, it would have to be 17 because 16 squared ends in 6. 15 squared is 225. 18 squared ends in a 4. So it's 17. It's the only one that it can be if it's going to be a perfect square. Okay, that's that's perfect logic. That uses that fact, that little trivial fact that we discovered and saw as our pattern. Okay, your homework is page 71. And this is due tomorrow. This is lesson 13. I almost said tomorrow's Saturday. Uh, you know, tomorrow's lesson is pretty short also. Okay. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, Conditional, I mean, not conditional, experimental probability. Theoretical book. probability. Do what? Maybe get a book and start. Yes, but you should get a book and start. You got 15 minutes. All right.